Sorry I'm late man. Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Charles Kruger. Whether you're watching the live or the rerun, let me know where you guys are watching from. You know the drill by now. If you are new to these broadcasts, you're in for a treat. We're getting into the presence of the Lord and tonight I feel like there's a, a certain flow into the prophetic teaching. Amen. Of what the Lord wants to share with us, His, his heart. He wants to share with us His heart. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've got my hot chocolate ready. I've got some water ready. My aircon was on. It's actually cool in here. Praise God. The Lord is good. He's a provider. He knows our needs. He knows what we need of, what we want, what our wants and our desires and our hopes and our dreams is. And the Lord is ever mindful of him, of us because he knows what, what his thoughts are towards us and his destiny and his dreams. And he has dreams and he has a purpose. Do you know the Lord dreams about us? And he longs for fellowship with us. Hello, Esti. Hello, 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 hello. Bless you. Jean Mostert, bless you. Johnny, excuse. Rega Zakate, bless you, bless you. Muriel, bless you. Let me get the remote. For running around. Bless you. Hello, hello, hello. Glory. Hello, Anita, Jenny, Annika, bless you, Michelle, bless you, oh, bless you, Jesus, Sean, bless you, Renir Nadia, bless you, Zida Gazoku Paka Televete, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, we welcome you, Lord, hello, Karen, hello, Yuki, we welcome you, Father, on these broadcasts, Lord, and especially this one, Lord, because Lord, my heart is yearning for you, Lord. And you know, you know, Lord, you are awakening love. You're stirring up love, Lord. And it's as if I have a sense that people are getting love sick. It's like, I don't know if that's the right word. I don't think so. But you, you get the idea that, that there's a longing. Uh, there's just a missing. It's like you miss him, you know, but he's right there. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Father, let the blood of Jesus flow over this broadcast, over every comment, every profile, every person that's on here and represented here, every business, every organization, every ministry. Let the blood of Jesus cover us, Lord, and use me for your glory and help me to share your heart tonight. I feel something in the spirit, and I don't know how to verbalize it, how to put it into words, but the Lord will help me tonight. Amen. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Bless you. Bless you, guys. If you haven't seen this morning's broadcast, the 11 a.m. one, uh, you, it's set up in two because I had difficulties with Vodacom. Uh, I never, we never have the problems with Vodacom with the signal, but because of all the power failures and outages, um, maybe there's something wrong with the batteries in the cell towers. So we had a little bit of an issue. But it's two broad, it's two um, broadcasts, it's two streams uh, right after one on top of another this morning uh, between 11 and 12 and that is like a compressed condensed essence of the practice of the present presence of the Holy Spirit so so you guys you are welcome to go and check it out it's gonna be life-changing so if you don't mind the interruptions uh, at least you can skip it when you're watching the rerun you know so, but that, that was a powerful thing. And, and you know what? The, the Lord wants to put emphasis on that. It's an urgent invitation into the presence of the Lord. And people ask me all the time, how do I get into the presence of the Lord? How do I get out of my situation? How do I, where, where do we go? And how do we go from here? And so the Lord answered. And it's very simple. Show up. Show up. And, let the, and enjoy your time with the Lord. Enjoy fellowship with Him. It's not always about the crisis and the emergency. Sometimes you've got to think bigger and see the bigger picture and see the bigger, get perspective and see things through God's viewpoint, you know, and worldview and, and point, vantage point from His perspective. Then you see, but hey, all is well. Jesus is on the throne. Heaven is not running around in a panic because now... Things are getting shaky in the earth. Uh, heaven is fine. All is well. The angels are happy. They're they, around the throne crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. 
the glory of God is is the, and we need to see the heaven manifest on earth. So all is well. But but we do have a, a privilege of entering in intentionally and on purpose, taking the word and the promises and taking ownership over it and entering in into the presence of the Lord. Any anyway. So yeah, do watch that. It's really awesome. It'll bless you. It'll change your life. It's life changing. Bless you guys. So so I've sent out some whatsapps to send prayer requests so please do send me your prayer request we're going to print it out again and over the course of the weekend we'll be sure to to get into the prayer requests through this medium through this broadcast platform and we are going to pray and make our petitions known and stand in agreement with one another one of the most amazing privileges that we have and the most powerful tools you know or operations that we have is unity and agreement where two or three agree touching anything it shall be done by my father which is in heaven so there is power in corporate anointing and in unity and in agreement when the saints come together and agree over something it's as good as done according to the word of the lord and so we're going to get in agreement over certain situations or prayer requests or whatever the things that's coming in uh, people's lives and situations and circumstances and we're going to petition heaven with thanksgiving and we're going to make our requests known and we're going to see some results we are getting a lot of testimonies people are getting healed people are getting jobs things are breaking through this miracle money showing up people are getting money that they that was they were waiting for years to get the money and the money is getting loose but things are happening and that's the way that the lord is we live a life of miracles because we serve a god of miracles amen so bless you guys and uh, thank you for joining again tonight. And um, I've got my hot chocolate. And it is lekker. And ons is bezig. And die dinge gebeur. And ons is baie bezig. And ek het nie gedink. Mens kan so bezig wees nie. Maar uh, the Lord is helping. You know? so it's, good. it's good to be busy. Busy with the things of God. Because you know what? You get. You, you enjoy. And you take a sense of pride in what you're doing. Because you enjoy what you're doing. And it's. You're called. You're born for what what you're busy with and, and that's there's no better place than that to be busy with what you were called and what your purpose is and what you were born for to be busy with that about your father's business that's food indeed that's food mm. oh, thank you jesus so as you post your prayer request tonight I just want to speak out of my heart because um, I, I was lying here I was just praying in tongues enjoying the air conditioning the newly acquired blessing of the Lord <laughs> you need an aircon in Africa <laughs> anyway so I was lying here and I I just felt that longing again for the Lord you know and you can get into a you can get so busy you can go into a lot and there can be a lot of things and a lot of activities and a lot of distractions you know um, even doing the right thing you can get so busy and so preoccupied with it it's not distraction but it's basically it's more preoccupied you you're busy 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 but there is a longing for the Lord and I'm not talking about a hunger that's not satisfied. I mean, you, you are satisfied. You are saved. You know His presence is right there. Have you ever loved somebody so much that even while you are with them, you miss them? Can, am I talking sense tonight, Jesus? Am I saying it right? Yes. Have you ever loved somebody so much that even while you with them and even being with them, you still long for them. That's, that's what you call being in love. I mean, you are with the person and there's still a longing and a missing and a yearning. And it's like a... And I mean, if this is true in the natural, there are times where you are almost lovesick for the Lord. You're like, hmm. Uh, you, you just enjoy His presence so much. You're just happy. You just... You just soaking in the presence of the Lord and the closeness of the Lord am I talking sense am I talking to somebody you know and there's this this being the sense 
of being undone in his presence. Just like he's unraveling you. He's, and he's, you are unraveled. You are undone. You are at his mercy. You are just at his mercy to show up and to bless you and to touch your life. You, you, you basically in his prayer, but you are so, you just totally, absolutely dependent on him. Just dependent on him. Just hundred hundred million times. You, hundred and ten percent dependent on the Lord because he is blessing you. The miracles are there. The glory is there. The wonder of his presence. The adoration is exploding in your heart. And it's all well and all is well, but there's still this. Whew, I don't know if the word, the longing, longing, I don't know if it's the right word, but it's this, this deep, profound sense of appreciation for what he's done for you and what he's doing and who he is. Just this, the sense of ecstatic joy at the fact that you know him and that is in your life and that there's this this groaning for more inside of you this just this interceding in your spirit just the holy spirit just awakening a hunger and a a receptiveness a sensitivity uh, and an awareness of his presence and 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 of bigger things to come and greater things that's in the pipeline and but there's this awareness of him that just, oh, that's a good place to be. Man, and sometimes we get so busy with carnal things and worldly things, which is important. He said, I don't pray that, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. I pray that you keep them in the world. We're supposed to be here. This is our home. This is where he wants us now. This is our place. Amen. It says we shall inherit the earth. How many promises in the word it says we shall inherit the earth? The, the just, the righteous, the meek, the peacemakers, and the, the yeah. So, but anyway, so we are in this world. We're busy with a lot of things, but when you practice the presence, when you are, you know, past the stage of trying to to get him to show up, and you you in this place where you are now walking with the Lord and you're always in communion with him and communication and you always sense his presence like always just right through the day always even if it's a crazy day if it's even if the whole world feels like it's just turned upside down and it's just shaking there's still this knowing even if everything is there's still I still know that it's gonna be fine that he's in control and that he's with me and throughout all of this, there's this profound, unique sense of longing for Him. Even while you are in these revival services, in meetings where the fire falls, where the glory is manifest, man. And I tell you, where you even under the influence of the Spirit, even drunk in the Spirit, let me tell you, I love Him. I love Jesus. I, I let it be known to the whole world. I tell you the truth. I love him because he first loved me and because he has awoken my heart to love him because he's poured his love in my heart. And that's why the word says, do not, do not, do not awaken my love until he pleases. Now, listen, it, the time pleases when that love is awoken inside of you, man, and you can't have intimacy with him. If you have this love that's awoken and you can't fellowship with him and you can't practice the presence and you don't know. Oh, woe unto me. Woe, woe unto me. I am undone. This is what Isaiah experienced in Isaiah chapter 6. He sees the, excuse me, he sees the Lord and he falls like a dead man. I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. He didn't know how to enter into worship in spirit and in truth. He wasn't born again yet. Yeah, nobody was. It was in the old covenant. But man, 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 the time pleases. Right now, the time pleases where he can awaken your heart to love him. He can awaken love because it pleases. Because now we can worship him in spirit and truth. We can pray in tongues. We can read the word and we can have the mind of Christ and understand what we're reading. 
because it's been made plain that even a child can understand it. And in fact, if you're not like a child, you can't go into the kingdom of God. And so this, I don't want to go into like eloquence of speech and words and art. And I want to talk my heart out tonight and I want to say to you that there comes a time where, where you have known the Lord for a while and in the midst of life in, in while, meanwhile all this stuff is happening and all the blessings is happening and, and man there's miracles and there's ups and downs and there's the, the, while all of that is happening there's this quiet assurance this cool, this confidence this blessed assurance of him being with you and he said he will never leave you he will never forsake you while life happens there must be this 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 longing in your heart for more for for him not for more of him i don't know man jesus how do you explain this my god how do you how do you say this i hope i'm making sense holy spirit help me sometimes we get so focused on the little things well for us it's not little but if you think about it it's little things we get so focused on a mountain or a problem and we make so much of the mole hills that it looks like a mountain but actually it's little things that if we can have our vision enlarged and we can have a bigger and a greater view worldview perspective opinion a, a bigger vision like have your vision enlarged and you see the world you see you think globally, you, you think eternally, you don't think time bound anymore. This is the mind of Christ. You know all things work together. For the, all these things, the things of the Spirit, all these things work together for the good of them, for them that love the Lord. Romans 8.28 oh, And there's, a, there's like an assurance that comes, man. And though the storms rage and though the nations are shaken and though it's crisis and it's i mean it's life and death situations there's just this knowing this this being still and knowing that he is god it's like you're with him but you still long for him and you still there's this dependence on him this I don't want to call it desperation. We're not desperate, but but it's almost like a desperate feeling. Like you, I'm desperate for him. You, but you know, you're fine. Everything's fine. You saved. You with him. You're gonna live forever. You mean you saved? You filled with the Spirit. You, eternity and heaven is your home, and that's it. And you're a citizen of the kingdom of God. But there's still this, even while being with him, there is this sense of dependency and the sense of uh, what's the word and i don't know if this music is the right thing this is not a, this is not an emotional thing or an upsweeping kind of a thing this is a thing that that's heart to heart and i i want to know if there's somebody i can't get enough of you lord you know uh, is there somebody that that can relate do i have fellowship in the saints tonight can i can you relate with what i'm trying to say <laughs> can, is there is there somebody that because i i don't i know i'm not it's reverence jess willer it's reverence it's a reverence it's a whoa it's an honoring him it's a because of his grace and his mercy and his goodness and his kindness and his unfailing love and his he's just relentless and he's faithful and he is dependable and trustworthy that even though we are unstable and sometimes we double and we tossed with tempest and we 
that there is this rock, this anchor for our souls, that this, there is this stability, this security that we have in Him, and that we are in this foundation of the Word of God, and we built, as the church, we built, each of us, as living stones in this temple of our God, you know, members in particular, part of the household of God, accepted in the beloved, part of the fellowship of the saints, a member, you, you have a place and nobody can replace you. You're not replaceable in the kingdom. In the world, you're replaceable, not in the kingdom. In the place, in the kingdom, you, nobody can do what you do in the kingdom of God. You are irreplaceable in the kingdom of God. You, you cannot be replaced. Nobody, there's, there's a specific, unique, particular, peculiar, mm, specific calling for you function for you purpose for you in the kingdom of God you know and it's this that though everything and it's all the same and, it's, and, and you look at creation and you see that it's groaning and you see that there's a, a yearning and a longing and waiting for in earnest expectation for the manifestation of the sons of God you see the groaning of creation and you see under the sun, the curses of fallen creation, you see the suffering and the pain and the torment. You see that under the sun, it's vanity. It is. You can see it. You, you, it, you, you can see it's vanity. You can see that it's no new thing that whatever was will be. And it's the like today the grass, the flowers of the field are there. Tomorrow it's weathered up and it's gone and you don't know its place anymore. And you see the wicked spread themselves like a green bay tree. And then you look for him and you earnestly consider where is he and he's gone. And you don't find a trace of him and the memory of him is gone. And nobody knows he even existed. And it's gone and it's just... And you see all this going. But there is this being plugged in it, while all this is going on. Being a believer. You are almost in a cocoon and in a bubble of his glory. That even if your emotions are, but there is a thing that is deeper than your emotions. That is deeper than your feelings and deeper than... Sometimes you, you speak and you don't mean what you say. Sometimes you just talk and sometimes you think and your thoughts and your... But at the end of the day when it's all said and done and you, you believe that you saved. Even if your life depended on it, you will not deny Him. Even if you felt far from Him, even if you... You felt like you were deserted and you felt like if push comes to shove, if the if, if your life must be put on the line right now to either be to confess him as Lord or to deny him and your life depended on it, you wouldn't deny him because the spirit man is deeper and greater. It's a spiritual force. Emotions are shallow it's a uh, fickle fickle and it's such a such a disgrace <laughs> it's a, such a disappointment such a it's a sad situation that many people are just living by their feelings and emotions when there is such a deeper life in our relationship with the lord a deeper life that is stable man stable if it was not for that stability, if I had to feel saved, if I had to look at my life and see if it looks as if I'm saved sometimes, then I, if I had to base my salvation on what it looked like or how I felt, then I would have missed it completely. Because I tell you the truth, um, that is a shallow, uh, that's a uh, oppervlakkige manier om te leven. It's a, hmm, there is a deeper, something deeper about being born again. That, but there's still, this is what I actually want to talk about. I, I know there's the assurance and the confidence and the, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and you believe and you know that you know that you know that you're saved. And nobody can take him away from you. No matter what you went through. No matter how you raved and ranted. And vented. And blew off your steam. 
at the Lord and at everybody else. And, and, and uh, beyond that, there is the, the depth, the anchor of the Spirit and the inner witness of the Spirit, knowing that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and that we don't have to make more of the situation than we make of the blood of Jesus. Sometimes we blow up our situation and our emotions and our mental state, the this, this state, the condition of our mental, our psychological condition. Sometimes we make more of that than the blood of Jesus and the finished work of the cross and the fact that you have been born again. There is a stability, man. That even while the storms rage and the winds and the tempest winds and the they, they, there has to be this, this confidence. And I, I know about the confidence and I know about the inner witness. But what I want to talk to you about tonight is what I feel the Holy Spirit is like when you are with Him. You know, you get to a point where you love Him so much that you, you actually fell in love with Jesus. That even while he is near, you still miss him. This is what I said in the beginning. Do, do I have somebody that can understand? Let's get back to that. that. That thing is a very interesting thing. Um, and this isn't a sermon. Oh man, this isn't a teaching. Uh, this is a heart to heart. This is just me talking about something I'm experiencing in my life. We, but it's not a sad missing him. It's not a, a desperation in, in the negative sense of the word. If I can put it that way. It's not a, a longing for the Lord that is not satisfied. Because he has quenched our thirst. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We fold. He has satisfied our needs and our hunger has been satisfied with the bread of heaven. And we have received the cup of the New Testament in his blood. We drink, we partake. We are not desperate like the world thinks about desperation. We're not desperate. We're not. We are fine. All is well. But there's the sense of dependency on him, of being undone, of, of trusting him, of Hoping in his mercy and trusting in his mercy before the sons of men of being in God's hands and at his mercy. That's a vulnerable state. It's a ever and the only one to whom you are vulnerable is him. You're not vulnerable to no other man. You are not. You don't make yourself vulnerable. You don't allow people into your secret place. You are not vulnerable to others. You don't cry in front of just anybody. These tears, I'm talking about the holy tears that you cry in the holy of holies, the secret place. You don't cry those tears in front of anybody. You don't show everybody how vulnerable towards God you are. If I can just find the words that how at his mercy you really are and how really truly dependent absolutely and utterly dependent you really are uh, in him and there is the safety of knowing and knowing that you know that you know because of the Holy Spirit saying to you you safe I've got you there is the knowing that it but you still know in yourself how much you depend and if it was not for his character and for the God, the person who he is, if it wasn't for his heart, if it wasn't for him being faithful and long suffering and forgiving, if it wasn't for him being love, you know, what would have become of you? Wherever would you have been if you are this love sick for the Lord, if you are this undone at the thought of him if if your heart is so yearnful of him and longing for him what would have happened to us if he played games with us and hid himself to tease us you know there's this one song that just came up now 
You don't give your heart in pieces. You don't hide yourself to tease us. What's the song's name? Pieces. You know that song? Well, it's beginning to make sense to me. Because you know what? What if he teased you? What if he trifled with his children? I don't even want to think about it. And I mean, if we are here now and we can relate to this being born again, and we have not even started to really abide in the secret place, body and soul wise. I know your spirit is there already. But sometimes your thoughts need to also get into the secret place. It's not, there's, there's nothing wrong with your soul also going in to the secret place and the Holy of Holies. Please don't leave your soul out. Uh, look, it's important. God wants to save soul, spirit and body. Amen. And He is doing and it will be and He's faithful and He will present us blame. And faithful is He that called us who also will do it. It's a done deal. He does not abandon the work of his hands. We will awaken in his likeness. He will not stop. He will not leave us like this. He will transform us into the image and the likeness of his son. This is what he promised in the word. There is a, this, but well, I was lying on my bed, praying in tongues and I felt him come in the room and just being here, I knew he was here. I just knew. But I was lying there, I said, Lord, I, I know you're here. I know I'm satisfied. I know you see me. I know you love me. I know as much as you have revealed your love to me, I know. But there's this, I just want to be with you. I, I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't want to, there's not, nowhere else I want to be right now. I just want to be with you. I'm just, I guess, brewers. Uh, what is the word for brewers? That's the Afrikaans word. Uh, undone. Uh, is brewers the right word? I don't know what it means, brewers. I don't know what Afrikaans word is. It's like you are tender. Not timid. Not oversensitive. That disgusts me. Fragile. That's the word. Vulnerable. Tender towards him. You know what I'm saying? That, that, when you get to that point, when that, that happens, they, that changes you, man. That changes the way you think of people. And that changes the way you view your situation. You tend to be, you tend to heart it. That's I just well exactly when I said that your thing come up. Tender hearted. That's exactly. That's spot on. Tender hearted. Yes, 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 Willer. You tender tender hearted to the Lord. And now I, I think that somebody, we might have a better idea of how he feels towards us, tender hearted towards us. Mm. And his love stands, his love remains. It stands against whatever you can throw at it. Whatever the world can throw at it. Whatever the devil can. His love is unconditional and his love remains. And his love is stable. It doesn't change. It's not conditional. His love doesn't change day by day. He's the same. He's without variation or shadow of turning. You know? And I tell you, if, if we just knew how much he loved us, we have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. Just come and man, 
if, if this what I'm saying is strange to you and, and there's a hunger in your heart for you to come to that point where you tender before Him again. Show up. Ask the Lord to do that. Because you can't get there. You, I, I remember days that I longed and remembered and, and I desired to be tender-hearted towards Him. And I tried and I couldn't do it. And I, I just, it's like you get busy, you get distracted, you get hard and cold and callous. It's like you are. There's nothing wrong. You're not unsaved suddenly, but you, you, there's this, and there are times that he just comes in and even if his presence is with you and you, you are aware of him, that there's still this tenderness. Ah, I don't know how to explain it. There's a yearning, a tenderness and a yearning heart even while he is there with you and he's in you and he's embracing you and you are in him and they but there's still this love love this deep calling to deep that's basically i i think i that i understand that scripture a little bit better now the deep calling to deep that's a that's a place with, that's beautiful. Uh, when you say, well, get sensitive to the presence of the Holy Spirit, people don't understand what that means because it takes a while to try and dissect it and try and get people to have an idea. And I think the Holy Spirit is trying to communicate something to us that deeper still, deeper and deeper. Yeah, yeah trying sweet surrender that's the place that's it's a, a communicating to us trying to get us to understand a place where it's not over sensitive um, ooey gooey uh, timidity you know timid uh, it's not the what, I, what he's talking about uh, it's uh, it's you can be wild. You you can be wild. He made you wild. Is you are wild at heart, especially men. You 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 can relate to being wild, man. Uh, people don't understand you because because you're not tamed. God wants you to be wild. He wants you to be wild, but but for Him, not for the devil. <laughs> not a, you think you're wild for the devil. You're not wild. You timid. You are intimidated. You manipulate it. You are in bondage. You are bound. You're a bond servant of Satan. You think you wild man. Uh, walking around trying to. You in the flesh. It's you not even in the place of walking in the spirit. That's wild. That's a place. But this is wild. Where you are in this state of being. And this is a secret place. Thing that I'm talking about it's a place of total trust it's a place that you there has to be such trust between you and God and such privacy such privacy such be, that where you are comfortable to be vulnerable and to open up your heart to him and yeah now look i didn't prepare this is not a message you can prepare i was just talking out of my heart so i'm now thank you lord i plead the blood of jesus over this message and i speak with reverence today in jesus name there is this place that, 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 that I'm trying to dig into this, what I'm trying to articulate. Uh, it's intimacy on spiritual level. This is not physical. I'm talking not, this has got nothing to do with physical. This is, the physical is a parable. It's got, it's just a, it's just a, it pales. I'm talking about you and God, holy stuff, not, this is holy, holy, holy stuff. Okay, so this is the 
but it's not it and you constantly uh, not vulnerable you constantly tender towards the Lord all the time but he look listen to this he honors that so much and he esteems it so highly that he will come and surround you and hold you and he will surround you with his wings and he'll hide you in the secret of his pavilion he hides you he keeps you as the apple of his eye he's jealous over that kind of worship he holds you my brother my brother my brother don't touch his anointed and do his prophets no listen when you are in that place you are you he who he fights for you you he will protect you he's he, he's jealous over you he, he, he God help the people that 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 criticize you because of that relationship and that or that that wants to affect you to 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 walk away from that kind of fellowship with the holy spirit god help the people that that gets in between you and him that tries to my 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 people my people my people <laughs> god gets jealous over that kind of thing the things i'm not talking about right now is he protects you because if you're vulnerable and you open yourself up and you put yourself in a place of total dependence and total surrender. It's a place of consent, total consent, total, I allow you, whatever you do, whatever you want, wherever you go, all that I have, all that I am, all that I ever will be, it's yours. It's yours. It's a place of that, that, and when, but it's real. It's not just words. It's not lip service. When that happens, oh man, oh man, oh man, he's got his arms around you. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. No tongue that rises up in judgment against you will, you, he, you will condemn. Oh, it's a, oh, I think. <clears throat> And we can go on. Let's go on. And in that place where He protects you, you, you depend on Him because you are just undone. It's a place where you are undone. You cannot protect yourself. You cannot defend yourself. You, you are in a place of being vulnerable before God. And if God doesn't protect you and He lifts from you, the wolves will take you. You, you're you in a place of being undone. You're in a place of total surrender. That if you had to deal with the situations of life. And if you had to deal with. This is a secret place. This is a holy place. This is a place where you can rest. Where you can let your guard down. This is a place in the presence of the Lord. Where you can let your guard down. And you don't have to be on the defensive. And the offense. and the. Do you know that this place is real? Do you know what I'm talking about? That there is this place. That if God doesn't protect you there. And this place isn't a visitation. It's a habitation. This is your heart I'm talking about. Let God protect your heart. We try and protect our hearts. <coughs> we try and protect our own hearts. <coughs> and this is what I'm talking about. I'm lying here on my bed just before the broadcast and I'm praying in tongues, listening to some dappy de keys, music, piano, music, worship. Praying in tongues. And there wasn't lightnings or thunders or an earthquake or fire or anything. It was just the sweet presence of the Lord. 
but there was a feeling of being undone and a feeling of tenderness towards him that I'm trying to explain it but but it's a place of total satisfaction a place of total um, uh, complete you are complete in that place you you're not when you are undone towards him man he raises you up he strengthens you he causes you to stand when a thousand falls at your side and when ten thousand falls at your right hand and your other side thousands of people fall you stand he he raises you up he strengthens you you are so satisfied in that moment in that tenderness towards him in that yearning towards him in that longing uh, that calling to him that the spirit and the bride says come lord jesus come in that calling to him in that tender place of you being in the secret place of the most high in the hidden in the secret of his pavilion hidden in him hidden i mean in the cleft of the rock no one touches you no one can come near you <coughs> vulnerable before god but now let me tell you when you abide there in your heart and your heart is in his hand I tell you he raises you up with authority and you will manifest as a son of god and you'll walk in authority you'll walk in miracles signs and wonders you will walk in boldness and in confidence oh, yes, he is so <coughs> the lord <clears throat> every witch i bind you in the name of jesus christ of Nazareth. Sure. That's a beautiful surrender. That's beautiful. Masks and yeah, take off your masks in the presence. There's no corona in the glory of God. Coronaviruses. So this is this is beautiful, guys, and thank you for joining me tonight and, and allowing me. Like you, you are basically mirroring a little bit of. I need, I need a mirror. Every one of us needs a mirror. Sometimes you walk around and you feel things in the presence. And this is why the fellowship of the saints is so important, because sometimes you feel things and you experience things in the presence of the Lord. That when you go and you talk your heart out in a safe place where this saints that way it's under the blood there can be all kinds of funny people joining this broadcast they have no idea what i'm talking about so i'm not worried about anybody else i'm talking about some people you know when you talk about this stuff heart to heart and you talk your heart out there's somebody there that that reflects back because because in the way that you relate with what i'm saying and in the way that you react to what i'm saying your reaction your relating to your excitement your agreement um, actually interprets what i am experiencing here and it interprets it to me in a way that i can now process if i can do, put it that way if you can think about a marriage you a man and now i can talk from a man's perspective a man and probably a woman as well but the man he has feelings then he doesn't know what he's feeling a man has got to understand is this anger is this love is this desire is this boredom you your emotions aren't always very clear if you're a man a woman might be a little bit more sensitive a man might feel something and he doesn't know what's going on it's not good for a man to be alone you go you 
you feel something and your wife comes and she's like a mirror and you don't know what you're feeling and she reflects and she like almost gives you feedback and she basically interprets in her way that she communicates with you and the way that she talks and relates to you and the way that you can then basically see the reflection of yourself in this bone of my bones flesh of my flesh you understand what i'm saying so that you can understand what you are feeling and who you are you know that you get your identity as a husband in the way that your wife treats you or the way that your wife believes in you or the way that your wife sees you that's where you get your identity as a husband <laughs> but these days the wives just want to criticize and just want to and they try and they try and influence their husbands and they think the way to influence him to be a better man is to to tell him how what a sorry husband he is, what a sad husband he is, what a terrible husband he is, and how lazy he is, and how he's never doing anything, and how, I mean, that, that husband thinks oh, he's the worst husband in the world. You've been telling him for 30 years, for maybe 22 years. This is not for older couples. You would have been divorced for a long time already. This is for newlyweds, so this is for free, for bonus. You don't have, I'm not charging you for this. <laughs> You've been telling him for the last two years what a terrible husband he is. Now you're surprised that he's a terrible husband. Women find it... It's interesting to find that most women, wives, want to... Do you know how you influence your husband? A husband is a... A man is a... I don't want to say stupid, but he's like a child in many ways. Positive reinforcement. That's the way that you influence that's the way God influences us he calls you he calls those things which are not as though they are you do something right he says hey look how awesome you are look how good you are look how well you did man I'm proud of you look at this wow wow I did it yes yes this is who I am and they get their identity and this is how you're going to influence your husband be a better man I mean you guys you you women, you wives, you've got to be wise. When he does something good, he comes home with a flower. It's a pathetic little verlep the pop blomiki, but he thinks it's good. He doesn't realize it's... He comes home and he does, he tries to do something romantic or he tries to do something to bless you with. Now you take it and you throw it in the trash. No, don't do that. <laughs> Say, oh, thank you, you're such a thoughtful husband, you know. I mean, if he's sincere, I'm not talking about people that's now coming and they're just spiteful. Talk about if he's sincere and you think, and you look and, and you see the little things that he's trying to do, appreciate that and let him know that you appreciate it. He'll feel more confident and he'll feel that that is his identity and he'll start doing more and more and more for you. Amen. So maybe that's a tip that saves a marriage tonight. Jesus name but this is what the Lord is also doing he's you get your identity in in and, and I am so blessed to have you guys as a mirror and basically just to talk my heart out and to to see and to have the reflection of the saints or the correspondence of the saints what is the word I know some most of you know more about these things that I'm talking about. I'm just touching on some things. And most of you have more experience and more practical ondervinding. Practice ondervinding. You, 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 but you can relate with what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now through me. So, uh, so, so I, I don't know what's the right word. Uh, it's not like that you mirror it. It's not that you it's as if you translate it's as if when we have fellowship as saints this is what the word of god says don't do not neglect the fellowship of the saints it's but you 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 cannot be a lone christian i tried it it does it's not good it's not nice because things get distorted when you are isolated 
You have to be part of the body. When you're part of the body, people will keep you real. And people, when you talk to people and when you minister to people and when you pray for one another and when you receive from somebody else, that fellowship, that ironing, sharpening iron, that's where you grow spiritually. It's ironing, iron sharpening iron. And when, when you have this, you know what? It's as if you are reflected in the faces and in the responses and in the reactions or in the responses, in the communication. You, your, you understand where you are with God better when you are part of the body of Christ. Can I put it that way? I started ministry. I start preaching the gospel. The moment I start winning souls, I grow spiritually. I tried to pray. I tried to fast before I wanted. I wanted to first grow spiritually and then go and do evangelism. Doesn't work like that. I wanted to grow spiritually into a mighty, mighty man of God before I started ministering. Doesn't work like that. You start where you are at. You start just as you come, just as you are. Because it's in the ministering to people and the responses and the reactions and sometimes the manifestations and sometimes the... It's in that interaction and involvement, that connectivity... That communication with others, with sinners, with preaching the gospel. It's there where you discover the effect of the gospel in your own life. And the effectiveness and the result and the benefit and the working of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And your personal relationship with him. The presence, you understand the presence better when you have people around you. For some reason, you, you, don't, you don't believe me. It's the truth. I understand things better when I speak it, when I release revelation, when I speak the word of God, when I talk my heart out. It's then when the penny drops, when my mind receives, and I, ah, oh, this is it. When I preach, I talk about things mostly, I just talk my heart out. Just talk. And while I'm talking, the revelation hits me. While I'm giving out the revelation, while I'm sowing the revelation, I receive a harvest. And when you give, revelation was never kept, uh, meant to be kept for yourself. When you keep revelation for yourself, it becomes stagnant and you get distorted. But the moment you get revelation and it's mature and it's ready to be released, then you release it. And the moment you release it, there's a current. There's the current because there's an outflow. When there's an outflow and there's an inflow, there's a current and there's always fresh revelations and revelation grows. Hallelujah. Release some things. Talk to people. Minister to people. Call somebody. Get yourself a Christian friend that you can talk to about these precious things. Stop talking about cars and Stop talking about your business and your money and your plans and your vacation and your and the latest soap opera that you watched and the lockdowns and the propaganda and the news and the nonsense. Talk. I don't want to. I don't want that. you. You're not going to talk to me about that rubbish. If you want to be my friend, you got to be able to relate with me about the things that's important to me and the things of God. I want to talk to people about Jesus. To friends, I, and I don't think of it as ministry either. I think of it as, man, this is what I want to talk about because I'm excited about this and this is my heart. And this is my heartbeat. I can't talk small talk with people. I can't do your networking things. I can't go for breakfast and talk about your about rubbish. I want to talk about Jesus. I want to know nothing amongst any man except Christ and Him crucified. I count all things as done. I know what that is. I know it. I don't care about it. Maybe it's important to you. I, I'm glad for you. Wonderful. There's things that I also enjoy, but, but I want meaning. If you talk about meaningful friendships and people that are close in your close inner circle, you know, there must be people that you can, you get to them, you talk about Jesus. 
That, that's, you start talking to Jesus about Jesus to your wife, to your husband. Start talking about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Isn't there a song like that? The King of Kings is He. Let's talk about Jesus. Oh, there's a song like that. I don't know. Maybe you'll know it. I'll go and Google it now. I'll check it out on Spotify. Let's talk about Jesus. Well, let's do. Let's talk about Jesus. This is my kind of a conversation. And uh, thank you for being my friend tonight. That I could just talk to you as Charles and heart to heart. And just talk my heart out about things that's precious to me. And I pray that this would have ministered to you. And I know that it, I know that there's, there's a lot here. There's a weighty, it's weighty. And I pray that that tenderness in your heart will be there. That the Holy Spirit will draw you into that tenderness. That you will be vulnerable to Him, but not desperate. In the negative sense of the word. Not, but a, a sin, a, a satisfaction. Uh, I, I think, I guess, I'm, I'm convinced now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That the word that I was looking for to describe that tenderness that I was talking about, the word is appreciation and thankfulness. That's the word. A deep sense thankfulness, a gratitude, a gratefulness, and an appreciation, a holy reverence, and a thankfulness <coughs> worship praise that's what it is yes that's what it is thank you Jesus that now I understand what I felt appreciation deep deep not appreciating the, the things that he does which is oh this is very important the things that he but the person he is and the father that he is and that he is long suffering and that he listens to you and he takes it and that he's mindful of you what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man thou should visit him and, and think of him and your thoughts towards him is more numerous than the sand of the seashore and you know the number of hairs on his head and you will never forget him. You'll never forsake him. You'll never leave him. A smoking flax you will not quench him. That's it. And so there's this thankfulness, but it's a tender appreciation that's and and it's a it's an appreciation that has attached itself, that has that has that that wants to hold that wants him to hold you. Don't let me go, Lord. And he will not. But there's this. It's not a fear. I'm not, I'm not talking about a fear like you're scared he's going to let you go. No, 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 no. no. It's like, oh Lord, thank you for never, for never letting go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then there, there, that's the place where real true kingdom joy in the Holy Ghost comes from. That's a place where they can beat you. They can take your stuff. They can lock you up. They can do what they want. But they can't take that joy from you. They can't take that holy joy. They can't touch that. They can't come near that. They can't. It's. They can't do it. They can't take it. They can't touch it. It's there. It's protected by the blood of Jesus. Man, what a, what a God we have. What a great salvation. Lord, we don't want to neglect such a great salvation. How otherwise are we going to be saved? What a great good what a good gospel. What a good Lord we have. What a precious gospel we have to preach and to share to the world. How beautiful is this? Isn't this amazing? Isn't this a privilege? Isn't this wonderful? Glory. Thank you, Lord. Guys, let's take communion. And I'm going to anoint you with a balm of Gilead after the communion. This is a good time for an offering into evangelism. 
Uh, make up your mind to sow into love born. There's the banking details. When, you, when it's appropriate, when the Lord reminds you, take these details down and make up your mind and say, purpose in your heart. The word says, let every man give without ungrudgingly, without of, not of necessity, but as with cheerfulness, because God loves the cheerful, as he purposed in his heart. You have to purpose in your heart to give. Otherwise, you're not going to give. And you're not going to give cheerfully either. Then you're going to be manipulated. Then you're going to come into a service where the people are pushing you for money. And they're going to play on your emotions. They're going to manipulate you and you're going to give and you're not going to receive any harvest. Purpose in your heart to give where you are being fed and where the anointing is and where this ministry needs to be launched. This, I'm not talking about the organization, Loveborn organization. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this ministry, this mantle, this calling, this gifting. This, what God is doing in this, on these, in my life, through my life. This needs to be launched. It needs to go. And this is how the Lord will do it. He will send the body to participate in this. This is the PayPal account. And God bless you in your giving. But purpose in your heart to do it. And God says he gives seed to the sower. Who's a sower? A sower is somebody that says, I'm going to sow. You know, I'm a sower. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant seed to get a harvest. This is a sower. And God gives seed to somebody like that. So you say, Lord, I'm a sower. I want you to post it on the comments. Say it, confess it, say, Lord, I'm a sower, give seed to the sower, and see if the Lord will not give you seed. See if he will not give you seed. Just say it right now, just say, I'm a sower, in Jesus' name. Father, I'm a sower, give seed to the sower, give seed to the sowers, in Jesus' name. And then purpose in your heart to give as the Lord leads you. Ask him, intentionally, ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sow? How much? Will you give me seed, please? I want to sow. If the Lord is in it, watch. It will come. It will come. Amen. Bless you. Get your communion elements, guys. Bless you in your sowing. I plead the blood of Jesus over your seed. In Jesus' name. Oh, I've got some lacquer fruit cake here. Now, you guys might not know what lacquer means, but South Africans know. It means it's good. Really good. It means sweet, man. Like nice. Like yes. Good. Tasty. You know, lacquer. <laughs> so this is in South Africa. When you come to visit South Africa, you'll hear a lot of people say, Ah, oh, lacquer man, lacquer, lacquer man, lacquer. Lacquer. <laughs> so lacquer, man. This is lacquer. It's lacquer in the presence of Jesus. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over the holy things that has been shared from the heart of the Father. And I thank you that you use me for your glory and that I could be an instrument in your hands tonight. That my tongue could be a pen in the hand of a ready writer, able to articulate by the inspiration and unctions and promptings of the Holy Spirit in a way that people can understand the heartbeat of my Father, the heart of God, the intimate things that He wants to share to people. I thank you for the privacy that we have with you. I thank you. There's no eavesdropping ears. There's no flies on the wall. There's no demons listening in. This is under the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Privacy with the Father. Lord, now we partake of the body and of the blood of your son Jesus father your only begotten son your only begotten son God the son died for us so that we can be one with him thank you we receive your body Lord in reverence in fear and trembling <laughs> reverential fear in such appreciation and tenderness today we thank you Lord
you, Father. You didn't miss this broadcast. broadcast. Thank you. You wouldn't have missed it. The Lord would have. The Lord knows. Take some oil. Lord, there is a tenderness that has been stirred up in people, Lord. Lord, now I pray for satisfaction. Satisfy the hunger. Meet every need. Give us the desires of our hearts. We will not want, Lord. Set the captives free. Heal the sick. Let the anointing destroy the yoke. Balm of Gilead. Come now, comforter. And put ointment on us, Lord. Thank you for the appreciation and the joy. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Let this be the oil of joy upon everyone watching, Lord, in Jesus' name. It's holy. It's holy. That's holy. of joy man tears of joy bless you Epsiva appreciate you guys too. I love and appreciate you, Lord. Ah, I appreciate you too, man. I appreciate you. We appreciate one another. We appreciate Jesus. Guys, the word is appreciation. That's what, I'm, that's what this whole broadcast, thankfulness, that's what this whole broadcast was all about. And, uh, and a longing I don't want to be anywhere else right now. Ah, I just want to be quiet. You know? I just want to be still and know that He is God. I don't want to go and perform anymore. I don't want to be in the flesh anymore. I don't want to be busybody anymore to be anchored I want to be with him I want, I want nothing more than that nothing I just want to be still and know that he I want to be still and know that he's God I don't know how, how else to say it somebody google that scripture just give me the reference rooted and grounded in his love where is that is that Ephesians is that Romans
Corinthians 15. Thank you. That's not the one I was thinking. <clears throat> From verse 14. This is lacquer. <laughs> For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Family. Paul knew something. For this cause I bow my knees. Oh, is this not the right? Oh, okay, we'll go to Colossians now. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World without end. Amen. is alive, the word is true, the word is Colossians 2 verse 6 As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, taught abounding therein with thanksgiving what listen to this Colossians 2 verse 7 rooted and walk in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith that's assurance confidence bold assurance is established in the faith that ye being that ye have been taught and yeah, as ye have been taught abounding therein abounding in the stability in the rootedness in the built upness in the establishment in the confidence abounding therein with thanksgiving thanksgiving abounding therein with thanksgiving Gee. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and bless you and I love you and I appreciate you. Well, let's read 14 as well. Listen to this. 
Above all these put on charity which is the bond of perfectness. This is in the English. But verse 15 in the English. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which ye are called in one body. To the which you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Thanks, thanks, thanks a million. Just say, Jesus, thanks a million. Jesus, thanks a million. Father, thanks a million. Holy Spirit, Thanks a million for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Bless you guys. I'll see you. Well, this morning my alarm didn't. My, my phone was flat. Because the power was off for like almost 20 hours here. There was no electricity. It's gone. So let's try again for tomorrow morning 6 a.m. I do want to get on 6 a.m. Just one thing. Let's try for tomorrow again, 6 a.m. If not, then I'll see you at 11. <laughs> Bless you guys. Love you. Enjoy the evening. Enjoy the presence. You will never be the same after tonight. In Jesus' name. You'll be different in a good way. You'll be you. Rooted and grounded. Knowing who you are in Christ. You are in your identity. Amen. Bless you. See